This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. With all the tourney talk, we haven't had a ton of time to break down basketball, break down hockey, I guess professional basketball, I should say, but we are changing that today. There is a 12-game banger in the NHL, so we're going to break down that and the NBA slate with Tom Vecchio getting his read on player props and much more across FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. You can find his work over at numberfire.com and his NBA DFS podcast, the Daily ISO, over on the Numberfire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Tom, it is a glorious time of year. NBA, NHL, heating up for the playoffs, MLB opening day. One week from today, that both makes me excited and frightened. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, this is arguably one of the best times in the calendar to be a sports fan. Uh, you know, playoffs right around the corner for NBA, NHL. This is a prime time for the end of the regular season. I'm super excited for baseball to start. And obviously March Madness happening, uh, you know, on the weekends. It's great. Uh, you've also got Quinnipiac in the college hockey tournament beginning this weekend. So right. um, you're going to be busy. This is uh, this is fun. Yeah, hopefully they can actually uh, not go 0-2 in national championship games. They actually can make it there and win it for once. That'd be great. I mean, that sounds like a plan. You know, <laughs> uh, they stuck all the Minnesota teams in the same region. So I've got not a ton to root for. Northwestern doesn't have a D1 team. So, like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to go all in on the Tom the Tom Express here. So we're rooting for you, Quinnipiac. Uh, my neighbor has a Quinnipiac sticker on their car. So we're all in on <laughs> Quinnipiac and rooting for them. I have to have some rooting interest here across the next couple of weeks. I can also have rooting interest in my bets for tonight. We're going to break down both the NBA and NHL with Tom getting his read on those here in just one second. But first, if you're looking for some of that previously alluded to Sweet 16 coverage for men's college basketball, both our Thursday and Friday previews are now up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page. Dr. Ed Feng joined me for the Thursday games. We had John Rostein and CBS Sports on for the Friday games. Both those are now up, talking spreads, futures markets, et cetera, et cetera. Just find those uncovering the spread and the FanDuel YouTube page. Whether your bracket is busted, still alive, or, you, or you're you just looking for another way to get involved in March Madness, FanDuel has you covered. That's why FanDuel and Xfinity Mobile are partnering to give you a chance to win a share of $10,000 for each of the Elite Eight, Final Four, and National Championship game. So $30,000 in total cash prizing. All you have to do is answer prop pick of questions around in-game action inclusive of Xfinity Mobile-themed questions. And the best part is it is free to play. Fans that answer the most questions correctly will win a share of the $10,000 grand prize for that round's contest. The first round of this contest locks on Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So head over to FanDuel now to get in on the action. To enter, go to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash Xfinity Mobile Pick Me or Pick Em Roll. FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash Xfinity Mobile Pick Em Roll. P-I-C-K-E-M Roll. No purchase necessary. Age and location restrictions apply. Void rule prohibited. See full terms at FanDuel.com. Xfinity Mobile has not sponsored or offered this promotion in any way. Let's dig in now to the NBA and the NHL. And as Tom, we were talking about before, we're getting closer to the playoffs, about three weeks away for the NBA, or two weeks, I guess, now, uh, for the NBA, NHL, winding down as well. And that does alter things from a betting perspective, both in terms of team-wide stuff, but also player props. So as we get closer to the playoffs, how does your approach to betting switch within those markets? Well, for NHL, there's there's really not too much of a change. You know, it's not like we're going to see a star player go from playing 20, you know, 19, 20, 21 minutes to all of a sudden playing 10. Like, that just doesn't happen. Could he go from 21 to 17? Sure, that is largely dependent on a blowout in either direction. They're just going to give the third and fourth line a little bit more time. So NHL is not really a factor. For the NBA, I do think it actually can be very, very impactful, and it can also lead to a lot of profitability. So one of the main areas that I focus on would be teams in playoff races and the star players. 
So let's just say a, a star player averages, you know, 30, 34, 35 minutes a night. Like this is not the time for coaches to be messing with the rotations. Like all of this needs to be figured out at this point. So instead of playing 34 minutes, they have to tighten that rotation. And maybe that just means like 37 or 38 minutes, which doesn't seem like a whole lot. But if you're like on a PRA bet or points plus rebounds or whatever it might be, like an extra four minutes is all like can be really huge, especially in, you know, like especially with the star player, like he's the main guy, like he's the high usage player. So NBA teams that are in tight playoff races, their star players, it should lean towards overs if they're going to be playing just a few more minutes. And then conversely, on the other side, teams that are completely out of the playoff races, this is the time of the year where we're going to start to see a lot of bench players get a lot of run. They're going to call up players from the G League and they're going to sign these players to 10 day contracts, which means they're just going to be limiting minutes overall because they know, like, you know, the Spurs, the Rockets, the Hornets, they kind of know what they have from some of their main guys. So they might as well give some run to some players that they may want to have like moving forward into the next few years. So it could lead to unders on star players on quote unquote bad teams. Are you also looking towards overs on like developmental guys at that point? Or is that more of a guessing game than you want to dive into at that point? It, it I would, but it's, it's very dependent on whether those lines are offered or not, because sure. I could say from like a, a projection standpoint, like, wow, this player is actually going to be in line for 15 minutes tonight because I know they're not going to be playing the star player, but his lines might not simply be off sure. just because he could play 15 minutes, he could play five, he could play 25, and then maybe you get him the next game, but it, it might not be initially. Yeah, so typically we're looking at minutes, looking at roles, looking at matchups, but this time of year looking at playoff implications too to know how mm -hmm. much we should, how much confidence we should have in those minutes projections for these guys in these right. roles. Let's start things off in the NBA, Tom. Uh, it is a four-game slate for tonight in the NBA, starting with the traditional markets. Anything you like there for tonight? I do. I like the Knicks minus three tonight in a bounce-back spot. This money line has moved a little bit. Uh, I saw it at minus 152 10 minutes ago before I hopped on. It's at minus 166. Uh, clear bounce back spot for the Knicks. They've lost two in a row. They did lose last time against Miami. They lost uh, a couple days ago against the Timberwolves when Julius Randle had 57 points. The Knicks should be beating the Orlando Magic. This is, again, a very clear spot for them to bounce back. Uh, the Magic, yeah, they have some good young players, but they're rotating in a lot of different guys. Um, there's nothing else to say other than the Knicks are the better team here. And this is a very, very clear spot for them to not be on a three-game losing streak. As you mentioned, that money line has shifted to minus 166 right now. The spread is still minus three. It's minus 112 there. How how long would you be go comfortable going with that? Like if it's three and a half, four, are you still okay with that? Or is that where it starts to be a stay away for you? I wouldn't go past four. If it's three, okay. three and a half, four is fine. But that's probably the line for me. Uh, I really don't ex – like, they are on the back-to-back, -back, as I mentioned. They lost to Miami last night, so it's not really a huge travel situation, Miami sure. to Orlando. And I really don't expect them to be resting any players. Like, this, like you would say early in the season, if this was December, maybe Jalen Brunson or Randall or R.J. Barrett would sit out just because, oh, okay, like, there's a back-to-back. -back. They can sit, but it's like, hey, they can't be on a three-game losing streak at this point in the season when they've uh, – and, and lose to the Magic. Like, that's yeah. not – it's not something that should be happening. Okay, so Tom likes the Knicks minus three. That is minus 112 right now against the Magic. What about player props? What do you see there for tonight, Tom? Uh, one would be Randall in this game, Julius Randall, over 26 and a half points. As I mentioned, he had 57 uh, a couple of days ago against the Timberwolves. Uh, rough shooting night for him last night. All things considered, it's a tough matchup going up against the Miami Heat. They play super slow. They're a good defensive team. You know, matched up against Bam Adebayo in certain circumstances, who's a very good defensive player is not easy for Randall. And it was reflected last night. Uh, again, bounce back spot against the Magic. They are not necessarily a good defensive team, as you would assume. And 26 and a half at minus 104, I think is a good spot for Randall. His points plus rebounds bet is okay. Uh, I saw it at, what was it, 30? 34 and a half minus 113 is the over there, minus 113 on the under as well. Right. Um, you know, I'd be okay with that. He hasn't been rebounding the ball a ton lately. Like mm -hmm. in that game against Minnesota, he had 57 points. He had like two rebounds or something. Like, 
well, granted he's scoring all the points, but right. Um, it's, I don't love that line. If it was at 33, I would actually be interested. Maybe 32 with some juice. I'd be actually be okay with it, but 34 is pretty online. So I'd rather just stay away. Yeah, again, the points number, just the raw points by themselves, 26 and a half for Randall, minus 104 on the over there. Anything else you like in the NBA for tonight, Tom? I do. I like the Clippers under tonight. They are playing the OKC Thunder. Uh, 232 and a half seems a, a bit too high, especially because the, the Clippers are going to be without Paul George for a couple weeks, uh, suffered that knee injury the other night. The Clippers for their home home over under this season are nine and twenty seven. That's the worst mark in the in the league in terms of overs when a team is at home. Uh, I expect the Clippers. You know they got to try and slow things down, control the game, uh, especially after losing Paul George. Like they shouldn't be looking to push things too much. So yeah, this could be a spot for you know theoretically look to Kawhi props, but I'd rather just stay away from that and go strictly with the under tonight. Yeah, the total there, 232 and a half, minus 110 on the under for the Clippers and the Thunder. And this is a spot where you mentioned Paul George is out, but also these games matter quite a bit for the, the yes. Clippers because in the West, they are dangerously close. Uh, I mean, everyone's dangerously close in the West at this point, uh, but dangerously close to the play in tournaments, stuff like that. So does that alter your enthusiasm in terms of the player props knowing it's a convergence of a big playoff playoff esque atmosphere with a key piece missing in this game yeah so i i spoke about Kawhi on the daily iso for from a fantasy perspective and i think he's in a great spot like mm -hmm. everything i mentioned like he's seeing a ton of minutes they have to consolidate the usage he should be out there this a like these are borderline must win games yeah because they're like they're one or two losses away from dropping into the play-in yeah. And, and because Paul George is out, that usage should be shifting to Kawhi. So if everything is going to be you know, consolidated, this is the spot that, yes, I like him from a fantasy perspective, uh, but I also expect them to play things very straightforward, which means their style of basketball, which is slow, good on defense, being efficient from the field rather than being explosive. And that does correlate well with the under here again, 232 and a half at minus 110 for the Clippers and the Thunder. Ready to shift focus and talk some NHL, Tom? Yeah, let's do it. All righty. Let's shift over to the NHL. As mentioned, it is a whopper of a 12 game slate for tonight in the NHL. Let's start things off, though, the pair of games that'll be on ESPN in case people want to watch those. We have got the Wild and the Flyers at 630. Actually, yeah. which is interesting. And then also the Penguins and the Stars. Looking at those two games specifically, Tom, anything you like in those? I do. I like the Wild and the Flyers under five and a half. This is uh, obviously it's a shorter line, five and a half. Most games are at six or six and a half. Um, both teams not really good on offense where we see both teams in the bottom 12 of the league for the fewest goals scored per 60 minutes in five and five situations over the past month. We also see the Wild as a very strong defensive team. And yes, the, the Flyers aren't a good team overall, but they're actually pretty modest on defense and in terms of goaltending so i'm not expecting a ton of goals just because the offenses are so bad and we actually have some decently strong deep or i would say very strong defense and a decently kind of sneaky strong defense on the flyer side so i expect the flyers to win this game and it's probably going to be a, a rather uninteresting game to watch if i'm being completely honest now, you mentioned that the total is low, five and a half. You are getting some leeway in there because the under is plus 104 uh, with that Wild and Flyers total for that game. Other one is mentioned is the Penguins and the Stars. Anything you like in that one or a pass for you? That would be the Stars in regulation at minus 110. The Penguins are on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. They surprisingly beat the Avalanche last night. The, the Penguins were riding a four-game losing streak going into last night. They have been struggling on defense. Their offense hasn't been scoring, and now they're going up against uh, the Stars again. Second night of a back-to-back, -back, the Stars are a solid offensive team, a solid defensive team. They have Jake should have Jake Ottinger in net tonight, who is one of the better goaltenders in the league. Uh, the Stars are coming off of a loss. This is, again, very simple stuff. We don't want to be taking these random shots. You know, The Stars' puck line would not be a spot that I would like to go. I'd rather just yeah. pick up the win in 60 minutes against a team that they are clearly better than. Uh, again, that one is actually minus 105 now. Any concern for you that it's uh, shifted a bit, or will you take the extra no. flexibility there? I will. I love that. I will take the stars at near even money. 
Okay, so minus 105. Again, that's the 60-minute money line for the Stars in that game against the Penguins. If you just click on the game, uh, scroll down to the 60-minute money line, you can get the Stars right there. Their regular money line, if you just want to bet them to win overall, minus 156 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Tom, we have 10 other games tonight in the NHL. Lots to choose from. What are you seeing there, starting on with the traditional markets? Tampa Bay, also the 60-minute line, plus 100 against the Ottawa Senators. Uh, another straightforward spot. The the Lightning have been really interesting this year where they have not been playing at the level that they were of the past few seasons, Stanley Cup winning team, all these sorts of things, setting records where they've been good this year, but they've been pretty inconsistent as is shown by a two game losing streak. They lost two nights ago against the Montreal Canadiens, who were one of the worst teams in the league. And now we get a chance to get them in a bounce back spot at even money when they should have Vasilevsky in night, uh, in night, in net tonight, which is obviously a good thing. And their offense is slowly trending upward. They, they've, again, been inconsistent with some of the players in and out of their lineups. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that they're tired because they've been in only Stanley Cup runs the past few seasons and all these extra games. And I get that. But, like, now is the time that we've actually seen them slowly trending upward despite this inconsistency. And it's a spot for them to break a two-game losing streak against a team they should not be losing against. So that uh, 60 minute money line is even money, as you mentioned, for the Lightning to beat the Senators. Are you, does the inconsistency, the volatility in a team impact which markets you want to bet them in? Because um, you've got the three way money line here in the 60 minutes at even money. You could go with their money line at minus 146, but does their volatility push you towards the more high upside market in this situation? That's exactly it. Like I don't, I, if they're, be, because they're so inconsistent, I'm going to take the spot where I'm going to be getting the most upside. And that's just that even money. I don't want to be laying that kind of juice with the team. Like I said, they've been a little bit up and down. Sure. I, I think that they're trending upward, you know, long-term throughout the season, but yes, the, the up and down does not, does not have me excited about minus 146 or wherever they're at. Yeah, they are minus 146 in the traditional money line, but the 60-minute money line, even money, for Tampa Bay against Ottawa. What else as far as traditional markets in the NHL? The Jet, uh, Winnipeg Jets at Anaheim Ducks. It's one of the last games on the slate. Uh, under 6.5, minus 130, I think it's still at. Mm -hmm. The Ducks are not a good offensive team. The Jets are really, really struggling on offense. It is extremely noticeable that they simply cannot score. The differential between their goals, actual goals scored and expected goal scores is actually very massive. And the Jets are still good on defense. They still have Connor Hellybuck in that, who's probably going to be one of the top finalists for the Vesna Trophy, which is the Goalie of the Year award. He's not going to win it. Uh, Linus Olmark from the Bruins is going to win that. But Hellybuck is still having an awesome season. And now they're going up against one of the worst offenses in the league, uh, combined with the fact that the Jets simply cannot score. I guess that makes a couple of Jets teams that can't score. But I digress. Uh, yeah, so the under six and a half, despite it being minus 130, is still the, the right spot to be on tonight. Yeah, minus 130, that number. That's for the Jets and the Ducks. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern game for tonight. Um, poor Jets. You know, yeah. just, it happens. It happens for sure. Okay, uh, what about player props in the NHL? Uh, again, a lot of games to choose from. What are your favorites here? Starting off with the Vancouver Canucks hosting the San Jose Sharks, the last game on the slate. Uh, the Canucks best player, Elias Pedersen, over three and a half shots. That's sitting at plus 108. The best player on their team, top line center, top power play unit, the star, uh, excuse me, not the stars, the Sharks, bottom half, bottom 10 in the league, depending on where you look last month. You know, uh, over the course of the regular season, when it comes to Corsi against, which are total shot attempts allowed, uh, Pedersen is on an awesome streak, despite being on one of the worst teams in the league. He has an awesome offensive streak right now. He's piling up points nearly every game. Um, love this matchup for them. I expect, uh, as you can see, the over is six and a half with minus 140 on the over. So this game is not expecting a whole lot of defense, which means plenty of shots back and forth. Uh, again, the number for Pedersen, this is in the Sharks versus Canucks game. Over three and a half is plus 108 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that situation where you don't need to look at the alt markets because you're already getting a pretty good number on the over there and expecting a lot of shot volume and a game with a high total, stuff like that. So I think that makes sense. Anything else as far as player props tonight? Yeah, and I will say, like, it's very clear that that, that six and a half is juiced heavily at minus 140, which is a very clear indication of what we should be seeing right? Uh, in that. Uh, the next market I want to look at is is the uh, Maple Leafs visiting the Panthers. 
Uh, so some of these goal props weren't up before. They're they're up now. Okay. And one of them would be William Nylander at plus 160 for a goal. I think that line is a little bit long. Uh he hasn't Weren't you guessing it'd be 140 before he came on the air? Right. Now it's 160? Yeah. Sick. <laughs> so I was expecting to be, or it probably should be a little bit lower. And he hasn't scored in four games, five games. Uh, he doesn't have any points, I should say. No no goals or assists in this time. But they still have a great offense. And the Panthers also have an awesome offense where we see the Panthers get into these games where, yeah, their defense is really inconsistent. That's why they're like they're fighting for a, a wild card spot. With mm-hmm. Bobrovsky, their goalie can be super inconsistent, but they have arguably one of the best offenses in the league. So they get into these games where, yeah, they can fall behind three one, but they have the offense to pick it up. So the other teams can't like sit back and play a controlled style. They have to match their pace, which gives us these games that are like seven to four or seven yeah. to you know seven to three, which just just has so much back and forth action. So. We look at Nylander's number, and because he's on the second forward line, he's on the first power play, he has good shot volume, and his number is a little bit longer than I'd like. Even if it doesn't hit tonight, I still think it's like uh, objectively a great value to be taking a shot on because I expect it to be much lower. And when he's on his goal-scoring streak, which he was earlier in the season, we're only getting this number at like plus 115 or plus 110. Right. So plus 160 is just a little bit off for me, and I love that. Based on where he's at at other books and based on your intuition around him, it seems like he's probably going to shorten. So let's say someone's listening to this 3 p.m. Eastern, the number is shortened. How short are you comfortable going where that'd still be a value for you? Are we talking like 140? Is that appropriate for you, do you think? Or? Yeah. I, okay. I If it dropped below 140, like if you could, if you found it at 125 or 115, I, I wouldn't love it. Right. And I probably would just stay away at that point sure. because... You know, we're looking at some of the the goal odds in this game. Matthews is plus 100. Kachuk is 105. Like, that's where they should be. Yeah. And Nylander shouldn't be at plus 115. 130 yeah. is probably the lowest I would consider it. Okay, so it's plus 160 right now for Nylander. This is in the Leafs versus Panthers game. Nylander to score a goal. Plus 160 right now. Check on that. As always, shop around. Try to get the best number. But it does sound like that is a pretty forgiving number with where things currently stand. Anything else you like in the NHL for tonight, Tom? <sighs> The Bruins are hosting the Montreal Canadiens. This is a great rivalry matchup, an original six matchup, as the money line would indicate, as you can see there. (laughs) The Bruins, the best team in the league, who are on a record-setting pace this year for wins, for points, are massively favored tonight. Their their puck line is incredibly juiced. Yeah. So I actually have interest in going to the Bruins minus two and a half, if you can find that on... Their alt uh, yeah. puck line, um, which is obviously um, getting a puck line is hard enough, is, is as I've said before. But it's minus 102, uh, Bruins minus two and a half. That right. seems, you it's, know, it's tough. Uh, it's not forgiving. I'll say it's, that. <laughs> it's not forgiving. But based on the traditional market of the money line and the puck line, I think that's a good indication of what we should be seeing from that this game. Yeah. So if that were to happen, like, why are they so heavily favored? It's like, well, they're heavily favored because they have the best, you know, they're the best team in the league and they're going up against one of the worst defenses. So if you were to bet that the money line doesn't make sense, the puck line doesn't make sense. The alternate puck line is the actual only spot to find any semblance of value. Yeah, that's so minus 102. That's the spot right. that would go. And then I like one shot prop in this game, which would be Brad Marchand at, over two and a half at minus 115. He's the player that uh, I've said before. This is the guy that, you know, licks players' faces. I've talked about him before. Uh, but he shows up in the, in these big rivalry games, big matchups. Uh, first forward line, first power play. Great role for him, whether it be his actual offensive role or the instigator role that he plays. He is there for every bit of it. So the March and uh, shot number again is uh, over two and a half minus 115. You were talking about the puck line before going back to that. The traditional puck line for the Bruins uh, minus one and a half is minus 170. Their money line is minus 450. Looking at uh, the alternate puck line of uh, minus two and a half at minus 102 and the March and shot prop preference for you. Would you go with the, the March and one just because you're getting a bit more leniency there, more paths to that one hitting or do you want to go with the puck, the alternate puck line at minus two and a half? Uh, you know, if I had to, if I had to make a pick, 
it would, I would just take the shot prop just because that can obviously be independent of right the game, uh, the, you know, the outcome of the game. Right. Where if, if you told me the Bruins won this game, one, uh, you know, two nothing. Sure. That that would make sense because they're they have the best defense in the league and the Canadians are are horrible. Um, and the, obviously the, the minus two and a half wouldn't hit. So I would just take the shot prop. It's just straightforward, the easiest to get to. Yeah, uh, that's the Marchand again. Over two and a half, minus one fifteen on that one. Just because I'm a novice hockey person, I want to ask you in terms of the NBA, when we see a team get up big, like last night, the 76ers, they're up 20, like 30 seconds into the game and Joel and Beach doesn't play the second half. Do we see similar stuff in the NHL where a team will coast if they get a big enough lead? Or is that dynamic not as important here because we can have empty net stuff like that? Um, How does that dynamic play out in terms of betting the NHL? In terms of betting... That's tough because there's, like, as I said, like we don't see top line players see their minutes dramatically changed. Yeah. Where like 21 to 17 minutes can happen, but it's never going to be like 20 minutes down to 10 minutes. Right. And or just so, sitting out the entire second half. Right. right. Unless <laughs> they're in, in bench, which is yeah. obviously rare. Yeah. Um, so like third and fourth liners would see, but that's strictly based on a game environment where, who was it? Uh, the Abs over the weekend they beat uh, Chicago five nothing. So instead of playing like twenty two minutes, Nathan McKinnon only played like seventeen or eighteen. Right. So he's never going to sit out the whole period. So it does lean towards unders because he literally won't have as many shifts on the ice. Sure. But that's not something we can project accurately because there's no way to tell if they win this game five, nothing, or they win this game four to two, because if they win the game four to two, he's going to be out there hundred percent of the time. Right. And with a so, shot prop, like if they're getting enough shot volume where they're up by that big, he's probably going to be involved most likely. Right. And I think that two and a half is not like an outrageous number in terms of the shots based oh, no, on no. my, again, novice knowledge of this. No, the, like if you compare it to, uh, to his teammate, David Poshnok, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume, but without looking, his shot prop is going to be four and a half and it might even be juiced to the over before yeah. I even look. It's four and a half and it's minus 130. Yeah. So he's their primary shooter. Him getting to five, if they pull out to a five nothing lead, could be at risk because they're just not going to be put, they're just going to be dumping the puck in. They're not going right. to be striving for offense if they don't have to. Right. Okay. Well, that is our breakdown of the NBA and the NHL for tonight via Tom Vecchio. Again, if you want to hear our breakdowns of the Thursday and Friday games in the Men's Suite 16, go find those over on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and over on the FanDuel YouTube page. But Tom, I want to thank you for swinging by for today, breaking down both the NBA and the NHL. Good luck tonight. Uh, Good luck to Quinnipiac. And I'll talk to you again on Monday to break down some MLB futures. Yes, thanks for having me. Super exciting time back on Monday. Absolutely. Check out Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Find his work on Number Fire and on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. We are back once again tomorrow. Austin Cast breaking down the Saturday games in the Elite Eight. I will also break down uh, NASCAR at Circuit of the Americas. Should be a fun time. We'll talk to you all then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 